two KH25ML Karens. I just love calling them Karens. I love firing Karens at targets. It's like it's like asking for the manager with explosives. Hello again, minions. It's Wheezy. I'm back in my Su-25 in DCS, and today I want to vary it up a little bit. I've created a custom mission here where I've set up a few targets to attack, and I want to talk through using some TV-guided missiles as well as some laser-guided missiles and rockets today. I figured I would kind of switch this one into more of a tutorial where I'll go through, now that I'm more familiar with these things, and just kind of explain how they work and try to use them. Still try not to crash or do anything stupid. Um, we're starting here on the ramp. What I'm going to load up here uh, first is going to be these TV guided missiles. Now there are TV guided bombs <laughs> that I still can't figure out how to really get them to track properly. So we're going to look at these TV guided missiles. We're going to look at the KH-29T, 670 kilogram TV guided missiles. So we're going to load up a pair of those. Uh, these will only load on pylons 5 and 7 on this aircraft. Um, we're also going to load up a pair of Karens, <laughs> these KH-25 ML 300 kilogram laser guided missiles. Uh, and we're going to dump these on the next outer pylons here. And then outside of that we're going to load up some laser guided rockets. So. We'll, we'll talk through the differences between how the laser-guided uh, rockets work versus the laser-guided missiles. All right, so we're just going to load up uh, another pair of laser-guided rockets on these outer pylons just because we're limited in what we can put uh, on these pylons. So we're going to take off with two KH-29T TV-guided missiles, two KH-25ML Karens. I just love calling them Karens. I love firing Karens at targets. It's like, it's like asking for the manager with explosives. And then uh, four 340 millimeter laser guided rockets. We've got those selected, so when I click OK here, I've also selected a nice amount of fuel. And so it's gonna go through rearm. To rearm, we do have to have the engines off um, as the aircraft's gonna start rocking as we're loading up. So there we go, those are our TV guided missiles. And next we're gonna get our pair of Karens. And then we're going to start getting loaded up with these laser guided rockets here. Now these rockets are actually loaded into rocket tubes. So whereas the Karen, the entire missile will drop and fire, the same with this uh, TV guided missile, um, these Going rockets down. will actually fire down. out of these tubes and leave the rocket tubes still attached to the aircraft. That is loaded, good to go. So let's fire up the engines. Uh, first turn on the electronics. All right. Gimbals are setting, avionics coming up. Uh, I had already fired up the engine, so as soon as the electronics came on, the engines are firing up. Now, as far as our targets today, um, we're taking off from Anapa Yep. Uh, so we're gonna take off, head straight to the northeast, where I've got three sets of four M109 uh, artillery, armored artillery batteries. And yeah, just gonna go and go and blow some shit up real quick. Show you how these weapons work. Yeah, hopefully you learn something. I get some more practice out of it, so. Let's close the cockpit, make it safer to take off. And, uh, we got flaps down, ready to go. Let's fire it up. And hit that beautiful sky. mode I do have our waypoint one set to the targets that I've set up but at about 17 kilometers from here we're gonna switch to air to ground mode bring up our Schwal TV sensor here we are gonna start with our TV guided missiles and the cool thing about the TV guided missiles is they are fire and forget so once you have a target locked with them you can turn the aircraft away. The TV doesn't, the Schwal sensor doesn't have to be locked on the target for it to hit the target, unlike the laser guided weapons, which do have to have that all the way. So I've gotten in here. I can zoom in with this. 
Uh, I've got my target reticle here, which is expandable or collapsible, set to about 10 meters, which should be about the size of these vehicles that I need, so that when that target gets over something that size that it expects to see, it can try to lock it. It does have to find some contrast here to lock in, so um, even though I'm in range of the weapon, it hasn't locked yet. You see that KC at the top, so it's searching, um, but I haven't actually locked the target. AC there, you can see, so now I have target lock. NP at the bottom there is launch authorization. So this is a missile. All I gotta do is hold down the fire button until it launches, and it's gonna release. Head its way towards the target and strike right on. So I can actually, if I need to here, I can just break right off. I don't even have to keep the TV on target. You can see I broke the gimbal lock for the target there. Um, but that TV guided missile is still going to track its target. So let's, boom. There we go. Got good effect on target for that bad boy. So let's, we got one more of these, so let's uh, turn a little bit and come back. The aircraft is actually trying to turn over to that right hand side. We fired a really big heavy missile off the left side of the aircraft and we still have one hanging over on the right side here. So I can trim the aircraft to the left, for some left roll, so that it will try to basically the flight surfaces of the aircraft are going to be trimmed over so that the aircraft is constantly trying to roll left the amount that is being pulled to the right by that extra drag on the right hand side. There we see smoke from our other target here so we'll go ahead and lock in the cheval so that it's not waving around with the aircraft. Move it in. There you can see we got AC lock. Again TV guided missile. So we got release. This time we'll go ahead and leave the TV on gimbal so that we can watch on the camera as we're also watching. There we go. Yeah, TV and got to see it visually there. So the weapon selection has cycled us to our TV guided or our laser guided rockets, but we are going to switch over to our laser guided missiles and talk a little bit about uh, the difference there. The primary difference between the laser guided missile and the laser guided rockets, because obviously they're using the same targeting system, is that the laser guided missiles can be fired very much off axis, as in I don't have to have the nose of the aircraft pointed uh, directly at the target to fire the missile because it will track, whereas the laser guided rocket has less ability to maneuver like a missile and so you have to be pointed more at the target. If the aircraft detects that you are not pointed close enough to the laser designated target, then the rocket won't even fire. So I'm going to start with the missile, come around. Now the difference between the TV guided and the laser guided is that the laser guided has to use a laser as you might expect. So we are gonna have to activate the laser. The laser can overheat, so we have to manually turn it on for these weapons, let it track all the way to the target, and then turn it off. So here I'll hit Shift O to activate the laser. You can see we got launch authorization, laser active. I'll press the release button and hold it to fire. This missile will track, and I have to keep the TV and the laser locked on the target in order for it to impact. And then once that's done, turn off the laser so it doesn't overheat. And then we can maneuver for our next target. I believe I have one target left in this group of four over here. Be probably obscured by smoke, but uh, for the purpose of this, I think the TV can see through that. So, laser on, we're still in launch authorization. 
firing. And that's gonna track. And Booyakasha. Shack four targets. And remember to turn that laser off. We are down to our four laser guided rockets now. Same concept as the laser guided missiles. But again, since these are rockets, we're going to have to make sure we get the nose on. So I will illustrate that by locking my target with my nose high, holding the launch button after we get launch authorization, and showing how it won't launch until we actually get into the correct attitude nose on position. Lock the Cheval in. They are hiding in the trees just a little bit here. Um, we don't have a full lock on that yet. Keep moving in closer. On the left side of the HUD there, I haven't really pointed out, you've got the arrow and then those two solid bars. The two solid bars indicate the maximum and minimum range for the weapon, so you can't fire it until you get into that range. That arrow is where I am versus that distance. So that shows me visually on my HUD how close I am to being in range of firing this. We got AC, so we got target lock on the Schval. I haven't turned the laser on yet because we're not in launch range yet, so we'll wait for that. I'll show you, like I said, I'm gonna pull my nose up here. And as we reach the launch window, right there, you can see we're now in the window, but we don't have launch authorization because the laser's not on. Laser's on, launch authorization. I'm holding on the fire button, and it is not firing because I'm too high with this rocket. So I gotta get closer to nose on position, and then it releases. Once it gets in the window of where it can actually maneuver and strike the target, Bingo Bongo, it'll release. So. Now I'll turn my laser back off. I think we got an, another set of targets further down. Where are those other ones? Oh, all the way on the far side. I think we'll target those and we'll see if I can demonstrate switching targets in air with this next rocket fire. Now one thing you may notice with the Cheval targeting is it is a TV, it is a video targeting system. There's obviously some computer brains behind the scenes there, but for it to intelligently lock based on the size of the object it's expecting to see in the targeting reticle, but it also relies on that visual contrast to identify objects to lock. So depending on where the sun is uh, in the sky relative to your targets, when you're flying with the sun directly behind you, you don't get a lot of contrast and so it can take the Cheval longer to lock up because it can't differentiate the target. If you're having trouble getting the Cheval to lock up, that is almost certainly why. All right, you can see him kind of here. You can see we're not getting very high contrast with this angle. So what I'm gonna try and do is lock on one of these guys on the right here. And then in as the rocket's in flight, I'm gonna transition the laser over to one of the other targets, see if we can get it to lock as it's flying. Okay, so this one's locked. We got AC there. Go ahead and activate the laser before we get to the launch window so I can fire it as soon as I can. I'm holding the launch already. So now it's launched, so we're gonna move the laser to this other target, and now we're gonna even move it over to this other one here. And it will track with the laser and boom, hit that far left target. So even though when we launched, we were targeting that right vehicle, because the seeker on that thing is just following the laser designation, it was able to change targets in flight. So even though it's not fire and forget, it does give you that ability to track a target as it's moving or to change a target in flight. So we have got two more rockets left. I will show you on this run with these two how if you time it right and you're going slow enough when you reach maximum launch distance, you can actually fire one laser guided rocket, guide it to the target, let it hit, locate the other one, and fire before you get minimum distance. I also may notice that um, 
as I'm getting ready to navigate around, once you break the gimbal limit of where your cheval is locked onto, it resets. You can do that manually by hitting control I um, up to bore sighted, so basically straight up ahead of the aircraft. Um, so before I'm turning back in towards the target, you'll see me always manually move that back down lower where when I nose around towards the targets, that's where I'm going to be expecting to see those targets more closely so that I can lose, move that sensor you know, less distance, it makes it easier for me to target as I'm coming in. So I can see I got one target here on the left, and I think my other one's all the way over here on the right. So we're gonna have to move. There's one near the water. Can I lock up that guy that's like in the water? For some reason, some of these vehicles like to run when I blow up their friend and hide in the water. So we're gonna go with, uh, we're gonna go with this guy. Okay, we've got a target lock there. So I'm gonna go to idle throttle. Hopefully I don't fall out of the sky here. I should I should be good because I'm gonna be coming in at a bit of a downward angle as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn on the laser. Hold release. Once we get launch authorization, that'll fire. Now I'm gonna stay on target. I can pull my nose up a little bit here because the rocket's already tracking, so I can keep the laser on, but I don't have to keep my nose pointed specifically at that target. All right, that's hit. So I'm, I zoomed out so I can hopefully retarget more quickly. Holding launch. Getting the nose on. Oof, got it in time. So I'm going to still go slow because I don't want to break the gimbal limit of my laser. And boom. Good effect on target. Laser off, and we are out of munitions, and we have hit a target with every single shot, so go us. So in our navigate modes, this B3B, again, Cyrillic, it's Russian, but that's essentially RTB, that's return to base mode, so it gets us to where we need to be for our approach to the runway, and then when we reach that, you'll see it switch over here in just a second, boom, NOC, which is our landing mode. Um, and that's going to line us up and bring us in for touchdown on the runway. So we're going to line up our crosshair of our aircraft there with the navigation circle telling us where to get on route and heading. Top left corner there, it's telling us our current airspeed versus our target airspeed, our current altitude versus our target altitude. And so you just basically try and connect the dots. Keep your crosshair in the circle. Try to keep your speed and your altitude where they're supposed to be, and that'll bring you down where you need to be. I'm going low and slow enough now. Bring my gear down. Part of me that has always played arcadey flight games like Ace Combat, stuff like that, always wants to really just rush in. There's the outer marker. Wants to just come in and burn off a bunch of airspeed and land kind of fast and sloppy, but uh, when you're actually doing it the right way and the safe way for the aircraft, for an aircraft that would actually break if you hit the runway too hard, it does feel like you're crawling in for a long time. It takes several minutes to line up and land. Final approach brief, inner marker. I'll go ahead all the way to idle throttle, and I even like hitting my air brakes just to slow us down as much as possible. Come crawling in slow. We're gonna flare as we come in. Try and touch down nice and gentle on those rear wheels. Pink, like a feather. And we'll go ahead and use the parachute for this landing to slow us down a lot faster. Easy peasy. Way better than my first couple of, of touchdowns you guys saw in videos, huh? I probably landed this bad boy close to 50 times now, so practice makes perfect. We didn't run out of fuel, used all our munitions, hit all our targets. I say used all our munitions, I still have all my cannon ammo. I should have come around for a couple more of those targets with cannons, but what are you going to do?
This was uh, this was TV and laser guided practice today, guided missile practice. Maybe it's less entertaining me just having absolute success here. You know, <laughs> I took off, struck my targets exactly as I intended, and came back and landed safely. I mean, uh, now that I'm getting more comfortable in the aircraft, I'm gonna start moving into doing some combat missions. So that'll be fun. I'll definitely do some videos around that. I do have one more set of weapons, essentially, that I need to do some more training with. I'll probably make a video on, which is the anti-radar missiles, essentially the anti-SAM and anti-radar uh, missiles. Let me open that. Shut down the engines. And power off our electronics. Uh, so yeah, I'll be doing the anti-radar missiles and then going into some combat missions. And kind of once I've had some fun doing that, uh, it'll be a good time to kind of start working on learning a new aircraft. Not completely moving on from this one, because I feel like I've got a good grasp on most of the components of it. Although I'm by no means an expert at it, but definitely going to start working towards using another aircraft. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet next. Maybe the F-15. Uh, it'll be nice to get in an American aircraft since I've been in a Russian one for so long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, leave me a like. If you didn't like that, if me being just completely successful was super boring, you can leave me a dislike. Uh, subscribe if you're new here. Another video that you guys can watch if you're digging these DCS videos, now that I've got more practice in here, go back and watch my first DCS video going through the actual tutorial mission for TV guided missiles. See where I was at there versus where I am now in just a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.